We've all been there. We've walked into a gym feeling insecure or maybe didn't even go at all out of fear that somebody was going to judge us. Someone at work, maybe our boss, criticized our work and we allow it to affect us for the rest of the day. Or I know this one really well. We read a mean comment on social media and we really allow it to infiltrate our souls and hurt our feelings. Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube page. My name is Misha. I am a social media influencer and today we are going to talk about how not to give a shit about what other people think about you. So I guess first we have to address the fact that we do care, uh, but why? And we often care what people think about us because we are people pleasers. The good news is it's not your fault that you're a people pleaser. Humans are social creatures. We don't want to be alone. And so it's really common for people to change how they act or alter their personalities if the probability of someone liking them goes up. Also, for those of us who are not complete sociopaths, we have this inner voice, uh, this saboteur, who is very narcissistic, very conceited, if you will, who thinks that everybody in a room is looking at them and talking about them and thinking about them, which overwhelms us into feeling like we're constantly being judged. But the good news is that all of those other people are just as self-absorbed as we are. <laughs> when we're in the gym feeling insecure with our workouts or our bodies and that people are looking at us, those people, they're also looking at themselves in the mirror and worrying about other people looking at them. And so the great news is we don't have to give a fuck anymore. So I think the first step to not caring what other people think about you is self-acceptance. For me, self-acceptance is basically confidence, which is basically trust, trust in yourself. <clears throat> now on social media, I am someone that praises positivity and you're the baddest bitch and you're a 10 out of 10, babe. And a lot of other people see that as wishy-washy or void of awareness and criticism. But let it be clear that we're all human and nobody's perfect, even if they're really close, and we all have room to grow. But I also think that most of us are our own worst critics. We are fully capable and willing most of the time to focus on our shortcomings or where we can do better. And that can be exhausting. So from my point of view, it's a lot more productive to be able to focus on the areas where I already succeed, where I'm already doing well. I think it builds confidence, it builds trust within ourselves, and gives us more room, more bandwidth to work on the things that we need to work on. So my idea of self-acceptance is just getting to this baseline where you can say, I am important, I am worthy, I am capable. So you are important enough to make change. You are worthy enough to be better. You are capable of doing difficult things. And working through these things, you really start to get to know who you are at your core, which then builds this level of confidence. Confidence isn't just this thing that people are born with or not born with. It is, uh, it's a choice and something that we can work towards, we can practice, and we can get better at. Now, I do think that confidence Quiet confidence, loud confidence, wherever you fall on that scale, confidence frees you from the catastrophe of rejection from others. One thing I always preach, one thing I always talk about when someone asks me about confidence and or about how to love yourself, I say this phrase all the time, show up for yourself no matter how small every single day. And what I mean by that is making a choice at least once a day that is totally selfish, has no bearing on you as a child or a parent or a sibling or a friend or a partner. It's just something that is that's for you. It could be eating a piece of chocolate. It could be volunteering at a homeless shelter. It could be starting therapy. It could whatever it may be, something that is just for you. Because like I said earlier, confidence is basically at its core trust. It's trust in yourself. So when you are faced with an adversity, when you are faced with a rejection, when you are faced with criticism from an outside source, 
that has no bearing on you knowing who you are, your ethics, your morals, your values. And when you're faced with any of those criticisms or judgments, it's a lot easier for you to just put those into a box of, they just don't align with me. I think by now we all understand that not everybody's going to like us and we're not going to like everybody else. And that doesn't have to be a, a bad thing. We just have to find the people who align with our values, our morals, our ethics, the way that we work. And that's okay. And once we put a lot less focus, if any, on these negative outside forces, it frees up a lot of time for us to continue to work on ourselves, to continue to work on our own confidence, to continue to work on the relationships with people who do align with us. So in the end, it improves relationships, efficiency, and overall happiness. So the question is, well, how do we get there? How do we do it? And I think for me, I break this down into four different sections. I've seen other people talk about these same four, but I really like the idea. I think a crucial place to start is intention. I think intention can be the difference between not caring what somebody else thinks because it does not serve me, or not caring what somebody thinks because I'm just an asshole. So it's really important to remember the reasons why we want to gain our confidence and our own acceptance. For me, the intention is to drown out the unnecessary perceived judgment of others. It's to free up space in my soul to give more and receive more love. It's not about saying, screw everybody else and what everybody else thinks. It's just placing more value in the things that make me a better person, a better man, and also keeping the perspective that I am only in control of my own thoughts and my own actions. So that's intention. Another key component that I think is very helpful is the idea of service. I don't think the idea of loving ourselves or being aware of who we are should be solely indulgent. Think of the phrase, the more you give, the more you get. I think it's so true. Giving and serving without the expectation of compensation in any form, including praise, is really powerful. It should go without saying uh, how powerful and impactful this can be on how you feel about yourself. Because not only are you helping other people, are you giving back to your community, whatever the case may be, but you're also proving to yourself that you are strong enough to not only have your life on your shoulders, but to have a little bit of extra room to build other people up as well. And although we should do acts of kindness and acts of service without the expectation of compensation, including praise, oftentimes people are drawn to this kind of energy and you will get those things Anyway, acts of selflessness gets a lot of positive attention. And people might say very kind things to you. And something that's really important in those moments when people are affirming you or giving you positive feedback, now that we know who we are, is to really absorb those words, to hear those words, to repeat those words back to yourself and have those happy, positive, affirming kinds of words become part of your identity. So do acts of service negate if we're terrible people? Absolutely not. But it's back to that idea of reframing and focusing on the positive. The more time that we spend giving to communities around us, helping build up our friends, our families, our loved ones, strangers, focusing on those parts of our person make us want to be that person. I think a third step into gaining confidence and self-awareness is leadership. Something I do is anytime there's a leadership opportunity in front of me, I try to take it. You know, even if something is scary or it's something I know that I'm going to be bad at, that's okay. I think the idea that we have to be great at something and especially to be in a leadership position isn't necessarily true. It's always okay to start somewhere and get better. Now, I'm not talking about like running a country or you know, a leadership position where people's lives are in our hands, but, you know, a leadership position at church or in school or at work. But imagine you're in a leadership position anywhere and people are coming to you with questions. People are confiding in you. People are asking for your expertise and how much little by little that builds up your armor that, wow, I'm a pretty big deal. I think you really begin to believe that you are strong, you are knowledgeable, and you're worthy of having people look up to you. I think the fourth element of not giving a fuck what people think about you is this idea and concept of detachment, right? The 
it's important for us to fully realize who we are independent of anybody else's good or bad opinions. Now, this is difficult to implement or balance because naturally we feel happy when someone compliments us and we feel sad when someone criticizes us. But if we can do all of these other steps to fully realize who we are at our core, it allows us to detach ourselves from opinions. We can still be happy with compliments because we are happy with ourselves. But when it comes to possible judgments or criticism from other people, they become inane. And again, it's not this person doesn't matter. It's I know who I am. I'm comfortable and confident with who I am. And so it's okay that you think that. There's of course a lot of nuance here. Is this someone that we write off from our lives? Maybe, maybe not. Or maybe this is a one-off disagreement on a thing and we just say it's okay to disagree. One of those kinds of deals. So this idea of not caring what people think about you is not saying that you are always right or your opinion is the only one that matters. It just gives us the freedom to not have those people's opinions define us. So what are some actionable steps that you can do? So the first I've already said it's the showing up for yourself every single day. No matter how small, most of us are not made of money, we're not made of free time, we have responsibilities. So it can be very, very tiny. But think about when your partner or your friend or someone in your family does the smallest gesture of love for you and how great that feels. So it's that same concept of showing up and loving yourself every single day and, and building thread by thread this blanket of love around you, bestie. Second, this is not revolutionary. I surely am not the first person that's ever said this, but journaling, I find very helpful. The act of writing things out is one, very therapeutic for me. It just allows us to dump all of our thoughts and our feelings on our own time. Also, the act of writing it out specifically forces us to slow down our thoughts so that we can kind of work through them as we're writing them out, which I also think is, is really important, especially for someone like me. My brain is going brrrr, um, so sometimes it can be jumbled when I'm talking. The third one is therapy. Of course, therapy is not available to everyone, but the, the idea of sharing with another human being. We're already letting all of our thoughts out uh, on paper with ourselves, and this one is sharing it so that we can get some kind of feedback, but also just the nurturing embrace of another person being there with us. But this could be a, a licensed therapist. It could be your best friend. It can, it just, just somebody that you feel comfortable talking to. A fourth one is sleep. <laughs> I quit drinking five years ago, and I think one of the biggest benefits of that is that I have much better sleep at night, and it has done wonders for me as a person. I'm able to show up, I follow through more. These things that I wasn't great at before because I think I was tired, now that I've proven to myself that I'm capable of being a reliable person, uh, again, builds up my self-esteem, it builds up my self-awareness, it builds up my trust and my confidence in myself. And finally, we've talked about them, but it's really jumping at those service and or leadership opportunities. It's one thing to talk about them or watch them in a YouTube video and be like, oh, that's a good idea. But then taking the actionable steps to be like, oh, I'm going to go volunteer at an animal hospital or a homeless shelter or my child's school. One of the things that holds most of us back is just not saying yes in the moment and putting things off till another day and then that day never comes. So besties. If you have made it this far in the video, I just wanna tell you that I think that you are important. I think that you are worthy. I think that you are capable of doing great things, of being better and living a really happy life. If you are not already one of my social media followers, you can find me anywhere at Don't Cross a Gay Man. And if you have not already clicked subscribe here on YouTube, do so. All right, besties, love ya, bye.